Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY21 earnings conference call of Crossing Industries Limited. We have with us today from the management, Mr. Dilip Kaur, Managing Director, Mr. Kalyan Ram, CEO, Global Chemicals and Group Business Head Fertilizers and Insulators, Mr. Jain Dua, Chief Executive Officer, Chemical Division, Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10-0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adusya, CFO. Thank you, and over to you, sir. So, good, good afternoon to all the participants. So, as the virus uh, spreads across the country and has now started reaching hinterlands, the health and safety of our employees have uh, gained even more priority, uh, and especially at the plants. At, at our plants, uh, social distancing, rigorous screening, and health checks have become preset norms. In fact, we have initiated an automatic detection system in one of our plants, which would enable detection of face mask, body temperature, social distancing norms uh, remotely anywhere in the plant. So now coming to the quarter, uh, quarter one FY21, we have followed uh, four key themes uh, for the management in this quarter. Uh, these are all uh, mentioned on page five of the presentation, which I've all got. The first theme is uh, demand creation. The second theme is uh, cost rationalization. Third being innovation and agility. And the fourth being cash flow focus. So in our first theme, we have actually reoriented our portfolio for the quarter, depending on the demand. The concerns around uh, health and hygiene have uh, assumed primacy in light of the current pandemic, which uplifted the demand for chlorine WAP uh, value-added products. We witnessed uh, WAP realization improving and chlorine turning positive in this quarter due to increased demand. The lockdown severely impacted our operational and financial performance in the month of April the operational improve, uh, performance improved in June as majority of our plant resumed their operations, leading to better capacity utilization for the month of uh, June and for the quarter. As highlighted on page six, the capacity utilization of VSF business improved from a low single digit of 6% to 48% in June and now in July, it is actually running at 79%. The capacity utilization of a caustic soda plant improved from sub 25% level in April to 70% utilization level in June 20 and 78% now in, in July. We're not providing any guidance for August and September, but the fact is that we're gradually reverting to normalcy. On page seven, our share of value added products have improved across our businesses. The share of WAP in the overall VSF sales volume increased by 25% quarter on quarter to about 30% 30, 30 of the overall uh, volume. Similarly, for fertilizer business, the Purak, which is uh, the non urea sales revenue, have registered a double digit uh, sequential increase. In our second theme, we have uh, been at the forefront of uh, innovation. Rasim's uh, Liver brand has launched uh, antimicrobial fiber, the fabric produced uh, using the special fiber inherently possess possesses antimicrobial properties, which inhibits the growth of microbes on apparel and home textiles. We also saw emerging opportunity in the non-woven segment, and therefore we were nimble in tapping this opportunity by commencing non-woven production on our existing lines. In our third theme, our approach has been to reduce co uh, costs. 
across our businesses, we have reduced the fixed costs by 35%, which amounts to savings of 256 crore compared to FY20 quarterly average. Please note that not all of it is a permanent saving. However, we are targeting more actions on cost savings, which will be more permanent in nature. So of course, this fixed cost has, for example, repairs and maintenance, which has come down because of the lockdown as well. Lastly, as a fourth theme, we continue to maintain cash flow focused approach, and we continue to maintain a healthy liquidity level. We have calibrated our CapEx plan based on demand outlook and cash flows. Our interest cost has been most competitive in the market, the benefits of which is visible in this quarter with low interest costs and higher treasury income because of MTM gains. Part of uh, interest costs is capitalized uh, to the VSF uh, Velayat project. On page eight, uh, standalone revenue and EBITDA witnessed a month-on-month -month improvement driven by underlying business performance of VSF, chemicals, and fertilizers. The month of June contributed almost 45% of uh, quarterly revenue, up from about 23% in May. Uh, our EBITDA number uh, turned positive in month of May and June, after reporting a negative number in the month of April. Uh, and if you see, we, in June, we have 51 crore of uh, uh, EBITDA, and that, all, that has a COVID-related expense sitting out there of about 25 crore. So a June number would have been higher by 25 crore on a monthly uh, basis. Given exceptional circumstances, we've shared month-on-month -month breakup of financials and key performance indicators for better understanding. These details will not be uh, shared from the subsequent quarters. The, moving on to the next page, the consolidated revenue and EBITDA for the quarter stood at uh, 13,621 crore and 2,613 crore for, uh, for the quarter. On a standalone basis, the reported EBITDA was negative 46 crore. However, there's one-time cost of COVID-related CSR expense of about 40 crore sitting out there, adjusting for which the EBITDA would have been negative six crore. Moving on to page 11, the board has approved the CapEx of rupees 1,615 crore for FI21. And our CapEx spent uh, for the quarter stood at 131 crore. As of now, we have decided to continue the Vilayat VSF project and Brownfield project with revised timelines. We'll keep reviewing the balance amount of the CapEx uh, on quarter on quarter basis based on business uh, outlook. The, the other CapEx, so Vilayat projects is about 818 crore uh, plus 46 crore uh, uh, this year. And the balance amount is mainly towards the upkeep of plant and uh, environment related uh, uh, CapEx, as well as uh, some of the commitments that were already made of payments, et cetera, that are being made now. Moving on to business performance, uh, page uh, 13, Visco segment financial performance was impacted by lower sales volume and weak pricing environment. The weak operational performance of VFI weighed on the overall segmental performance. The capacity utilization of VFI has been low given the weak demand condition in uh, domestic as well as uh, overseas markets. VFI sales, was about 40, uh, 56 crore, and EBITDA loss was about 81 crore out of the 113 crore negative that you see on the slide. The domestic VSF realization, which is in the next page, were impacted by global VSF prices, which were at historic lows. 
The domestic demand for VSF remained low due to extension of local lockdowns in key manufacturing hubs, non-availability of workforce, and with malls and shopping centers uh, being non-operational. Our cost focus gained traction during the quarter. Our fixed costs reduced by 186 crore in comparison to average FY20 uh, cost. Moving on to the next page on VSF on page 15, the VSF uh, business switched their focus from domestic market to export markets and dedicated few production lines to cater to the export demand of specialty products. This actually led to 26% rise in share of exports to 38% in June 20 and improved the capacity utilization for overall VSF business as well. I'll move now to the chemical business performance, which is next page onwards. The operational and financial performance of chemical was better than uh, some of the other businesses. The capacity utilization ramped up to 70% in June, closer to March uh, utilization level. And please, uh, if you recall, March uh, uh, utilization level was lower because we lost the last uh, one week of March. The chemical business reported EBITDA of 41, positive 41 crore in, in the quarter, despite challenging market conditions. The caustic soda demand remained weak on account of lower demand from uh, user-based uh, industry. Chlorine value-added products uh, demand remained strong and touched pre-COVID COVID levels during the month of uh, June 20. The chlorine realization turned positive in the quarter, uh, driven by demand from disinfectants and hygiene-related products. On page 17, you will see that the global caustic prices were at uh, almost uh, four-year low and weakened to sub-$300 level during the quarter. The eco prices were influenced by weakness in caustic soda prices, but were partly com compensated by positive chlorine uh, prices. The domestic caustic prices continue to be impacted by excess su supply situation and continuous inflow of uh, imports. On uh, page 19, fertilizer business was one of the bright spots in the company's performance. Uh, the demand for urea remained strong on back of normal monsoon and advanced crop sowing. The YOY, YOY improvement in EBITDA was uh, driven by lower fixed cost of about 3.6 crore, one-time gain pertaining to freight uh, subsidy arrears of about 12 crore, and improved uh, uh, product sales by about 4.5. Uh, product, which is essentially non-urea uh, products uh, sold through our distribution channel, contributed almost 24% of the overall fertilizer EBITDA for, for the quarter. If I take you to page uh, 27 on sustainability, our VSF business has collaborated with other global viscose players in formulating the zero discharge of hazardous chemicals, ZDHC guidelines for man-made cellulosic fiber players, covering uh, responsible production as well as wastewater and air emission standards. We are committing. We are committed to uh, implementing ZDHC standards at all the fiber manufacturing units. In terms of uh, outlook uh, for the business, uh, with the easing of lockdown conditions and gradual resumption of economic activities, demand for the company's products is expected to increase in the coming quarters. We have initiated uh, measures uh, to optimize operations across plants, reduce fixed costs, and conserve cash. We continue to maintain a very comfortable level of liquidity to navigate any uncertain business environment. Our inherent uh, financial strength, our operational excellence, and diverse uh, product portfolio with cement, financial services, viscose, chemicals, etc., makes us uh, 
prepared to uh, withstand temporary disruptions and sustain the leadership across its businesses. So that's it from my side. I will now hand over back to the operator for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Gunjan Pichiani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my questions. So just two questions from my side. Firstly, on the VSF side, if you can just share the broader uh, you know, market um, you know, position, where where is it globally, how you're seeing things normalizing? But, I mean, I'm, I don't want to read too much into this quarter, but what is happening really in terms of both realization and the normalization, particularly the domestic normalization for Grassim. Um, and secondly, this CAPEX, uh, which has been approved, uh, uh, I mean, uh, given that, you know, we are still not sure of how things normalize, uh, why are we going ahead with 1,600-odd crores CAPEX in this year? Uh, is there, you know, is, is there a rationale to push it out right now and maybe look at it later? Because cash flows clearly may be an issue this year, uh, given the overall market dynamics. Uh, Gunjan, I'll try to respond to both your queries, and then maybe Ashish can, uh, can uh, chip in. Uh, the global viscose prices continue to remain the, under pressure. What, what I told you last quarter continued because still, because of the COVID, the, the demand side of the textile hasn't picked up as well. So China still continues to have a very low operation rate for the yarn manufacturing as also for the VSF manufacturing. So the VSF OR was about 64, 65%. Yarn is even less than that 50%. So, so the textile recovery has not been as good in China as for the other sectors. But it is slowly ramping up. So the, the viscose prices uh, touched the historic low during, during the quarter, and largely not because of anything else, but because they have inventories and there is no demand. Hmm. This quarter, I think uh, uh, the, the industry, uh, with the opening up of the European market, opening of the US market, I think the, the recovery in the global market has been significantly better than we expected. So, so even in India also, what has picked up is the export from India to uh, to rest of the world, not only in textile, in fiber, but in textiles also, in downstream, in, in apparel, everywhere. So I think the 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 U.S. and European economy and the consumption of textile etc. is picking up significantly uh, better than what the domestic has picked up. So that is one part of it. Uh, good thing is. Because of the low OR operation rate in the VSF plant, the inventory has started coming down. They're still high, but they're trending low. And we are seeing some signs of, uh, at least there's an effort being made to increase the prices by the Chinese players. So I, it's early days, but there's an effort on the part of Chinese players to take up the prices. So there could be a perhaps a bottom or, or near bottoming out of the, of the prices. So that is one part on the global prices. Uh, India demand, I think the good thing about the India demand is 80 to 90 percent of the fiber demand in India is from unorganized sector. It is not from the branded retail. So while the branded retail hasn't started the, uh, the way it should have started, but I think because of good uh, rural incomes, the, uh, the tier two, tier three towns economy doing better, the demand in that segment is picking up better. And that is the reason why we found after June, uh, a good uptick in the in the demand part of it. In fact, as we speak, all my plants are, uh, when I'm saying 80% capacity, the shortfall also only because of one segment. And that segment is the dope dyed. The dope dyed segment goes into the suiting industry, suiting and, and formal shirts and trousers. Now, the only segment of the market which has not done uh, picked up is this segment because offices are closed. People are still working from home. The marriages are not taking place. So we believe this part of the uh, segment will start looking up 
once the specialism comes to start. So maybe in a in a month, uh, in a month or month or two, when the specialism is around the corner, we believe this demand also should pick up. So as we speak, the the trend on the Indian demand is healthy. We are running our plants full blast, barring the barring the uh, dope dye part of it. The perhaps the the derailer could be the COVID spreading into hinterland, COVID getting into the rural part of the India, which was not affected. So why the demand became so good is because the smaller towns were not impacted by by uh, COVID, while the larger uh, the metro cities were impacted, where there is not much demand in terms of for, for our product. Second, during this lockdown, what is doing well is what they call sheet to street clothing. So this casual clothing, the pajamas kind of this thing. So and where a lot of viscose goes, so low cost clothing. So I think the the demand outlook for viscose looks to be good for two reasons. One is the kind of clothing which is uh, in vogue. Second is, if you see the global prices of cotton and viscose, the gap has come to almost 3,500 RMB, the Chinese currency. Now, it is widening. Now, these are the times when the shift starts happening. At these kind of high deltas, technically, the, 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 the downstream guys should start moving from uh, cotton to viscose. Now, how and when, I think we'll have to watch for it. But, but directionally, I believe the substitution should start in, 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 in uh, going forward. So that is the, the viscous supply demand balance and the pricing scenario. What we can't still gauge, I'm just giving you the leading indicators what you can, and then you can make a conclusion based on that. On the project per se, <clears throat> see, one is the, the current uh, crisis, the current uh, impact, what is happening. Second is the long-term uh, uh, drivers for the business. I think viscose, whatever you may say, will remain the fastest growing fiber because for, for various reasons we have been telling you. So the, the, the implicit demand for viscose has to be there. And in India, since we are the dominant player, the demand must come to us. So we believe, as per our projection, by Q4, uh, the textile demand in the country should come to normalcy or, or 90, 95% of normal levels. So FY22, by middle of FY22, uh, yeah, of course, FY20, right. So middle of FY22, the, the the demand will start growing significantly. And we anticipate there will be a shortage of gray fiber compared to what capacity we have and what demand will be available. And this project, uh, when I had shared with you earlier, has three advantages. It is uh, It has got the largest capacity lines, so which gives me very low cost of production. So I have a consistent advantage on the variable cost from this plant. Second, this plant is sharing its site with the existing plant. So it will become uh, the largest single location plant. The fixed cost will be very less. Thirdly, the quality of product from this, so the machines are the latest generation machine, will be world class. So it will be outstanding, very good quality, both for the domestic and the international market. So we believe this project is the right thing for the business to do to grow its competitiveness. And, and, and based on the projections, yes, we believe there will be enough demand. And even if the, there is an issue on demand, there are other operations with a high cost which we need to scale down rather than letting this suffer. So to our mind, this is a good investment which, will, which has a very strong case for early commissioning. In fact, the, 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 by, by mid-August, by the time this comes up next year, I think the demand will be running, will have pressure on the supply-demand situation. Then the rationale from our side. And, I, and uh, Ashish will share with you the, we, there won't be an impact on our balance sheet because of this uh, as much yeah yeah no absolutely i uh, uh, i think out of uh, 1615 crore of capex that i mentioned for the year uh, almost uh, the take up by vilayat project itself is about uh, 865 somewhere around that so a substantial part of it is that now, you, you would appreciate that uh, at Grassim and standalone level, we are uh, running almost 15 plus uh, uh, units. Now, uh, you know, to keep the upkeep of all these units, et cetera, there are certain CapEx uh, and there is also uh, increased environment related CapEx that we are incurring. So just to make sure that the upkeep and environment related CapEx are spent, 
uh, that itself overall uh, adds up to uh, the balance and plus the, in the projects uh, uh, other projects that we have completely put on uh, hold uh, in in chemical side uh, some of those projects there are commitments uh, that we have to fulfill uh, which may relate to msme etc as well so therefore there is small uh, some part of uh, capex is also towards that so really speaking other than for velayat which is a strategic capex the rest all of them are uh, bare minimum capex and 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 of course uh, uh, you know what what dilip had said the balance sheet of uh, uh, grasm is strong enough that even if there is in, we don't know yet where we going to land up at the end of the year because we we don't have visibility on ebitda but uh, uh, nevertheless Uh, we we strong if we have to take more debt to take care of this uh, capex okay got it thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of gaurav patelia from morgan stanley please go ahead hey thank you for taking my questions uh, firstly uh, any color on what the current run rate for export market is there in july and uh, how are you able to compete uh, with the chinese players in the export market uh, and is profitability very different from what it is in domestic market yeah uh, ash ash hal then you can add later on see the as we always always know the the profitability in export market is not as good as as domestic and that's why our effort has always been to maximize the domestic sale and the export become an overflow kind of Because, because the logistics in the domestic year the logistics cost advantage, and you you give provide extra services to people which are rewarded to you for, from the branding point of view. But the good thing is our cost of production, our in, in the in the Indian plants from where we export the khara in Vilayat are one of the lowest in the world. We are there sub one dollar. So even in a very competitive export prices, we do we do make positive money in this. So to that extent, it's a is adding value to the portfolio we are not doing export just to fill up capacity and uh, and there are two types of export one is export of grape fiber other is export of value added products so things like modal which we are exporting which has got a very good realization in fact when in this in this uh, in this market where the grape prices are very low the delta between specialty the modal price and grape has been highest ever it's more than a dollar and 20 cents so we make far more money in exporting uh, a value added product from grassim than we will do from even in selling in local market so what we are doing in export is the three parts to export which is modal which is a very high value added product non woven again as we told you last time in our call because of the hygiene uh, impact there is a lot of pre- uh, demand for the non woven fiber and non woven fiber has about 15 to 20 cents more premium over the gray textile fiber so bulk of the export we are doing this and, and remaining overflow is on the textile and that also there are geographies which are better paying within the same world so we we focus on high paying geographies from india so that's the kind of a thing uh, so i think uh, while it is not as profitable as the as the local market but if you under if you look at it my overall realization blended realization is much higher than my india grey prices And sir, what is the current run rate at your at which you are doing exports? Right it was now? it was forty forty percent of my portfolio was export in June, but now it is coming down, and we are, and we are we are doing more of these things. So about two hundred thirty two hundred forty tons per day, kind of a thing. Yeah, but I think uh, you know we should not assume uh, exports. I think we should go assume the levels to be uh, back to FI twenty levels. Uh, by Q4, export. yeah, yeah, yeah. By by, yeah, Q3, Q4. We should. This is this is transient to make sure because you see when you use assets fully, you reduce the cost of production, the operating efficiencies go up. So this 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 helps you in two ways: improving sure. operating efficiencies and getting you some positive uh, EBITDA. Sure, sure. So second question is for Ashish specifically. Uh, I know it's difficult, but what is the peak net debt uh, you have in mind beyond which you would like to flex your capex plan? 
so that you don't kind of uh, you know uh, go beyond that levels i know net debt to a beta comfortable level is 2.5 times which you had shared in the past but uh, any peak net debt number you have in mind for fy21 thank you yeah so see i i think the net debt to a beta is not the right metric to look at uh, uh, for this year okay i think you know if if i look at last 12 month uh, ebitda and try to calculate the net debt at this stage it uh, comes to uh, somewhere on 1.65 to 7 time, 1.7 times but uh, uh, really speaking uh, you know one quarter out of that is actually uh, less than zero of ebitda so you're really calculating that on three quarters so i would uh, Uh, ideally uh, look at more annualizing the subsequent quarters that keep coming with an improvement etc to uh, look at net debt to uh, ebitda so ideally when we reach quarter 4 whatever is the which we believe is probably going to be normalized uh, quarter the ebitda in that quarter should be annualized to calculate net debt to ebitda and and uh, you know i i think we'll be below a you know a threshold etc uh, based on that number sure thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rashi chopra from city group please go ahead thank you this from bookkeeping question we um, global bsf realization is down about 6% sequentially but uh, the last quarter the domestic realizations got a benefit uh, right because of china closure so for you what has been the realization decline sequentially one and second is where are those realizations now versus the april to june quarter that's one question and second just wanted to check um, how much you have put in the uh, rice issue for aditya birla fashion so far i i could understand the question you are saying uh, the 6% percent qoq reduction that's over the last quarter because no, in no, the no. last quarter yeah yeah uh, the 6% is a global decline or is it your decline as well that that was my question no no ours is lesser ours is much lesser. ours is i think 3 3% if i'm not wrong yeah ours and, is 3% okay and the spot realizations versus the uh, they are they are they are, they are uh, broadly in line i think It, it's only issue the mix now. Otherwise, the broadly they are in line with the quarter four. Got it. And just on the right issue, so as it will last. Yeah. So, so we 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 have uh, we have put only the uh, calls. So first of all, we put mm-hmm. only our share of uh, uh, amount. So our commitment uh, to them is somewhere around a hundred crore out of a thousand crore rights uh, that they did. and the first call uh, is about i think 54 crore or something so we put only that much amount uh, and as the calls come is when we will be paying the balance amount got it and in the at least in the imminent future there is no proposal to invest any further in the group company right yeah absolutely no proposal zero proposal uh, to put other than the calls that will come from other people of fashion got it thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Ramakrishna from BSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. A uh, more or less the questions have been asked, but you know, just to clarify, you know, you have two purposes which you do. Uh, the way I see it is that the cash flows from the business uh, will be enough to take care of the capex. Uh, fingers crossed that you know the uh, EBITDA kind of at least keeps the June numbers. and then you have the holding company kind of uh, uh, role also which you do how do you see the debt in relation to both these things because like for example financial services business you can't anticipate how much capital it will need and so on so how do you see that uh, panning out through the year that's the only question that i have sure so uh, you know i think in investments in uh, uh, subsidiaries or group companies okay Uh, the way we look at it is that the standalone businesses of Grafton, which is chemicals, BSF, fertilizer, etc., always takes precedence over uh, uh, the the investments in the subsidiaries or group companies. 
So first we look at, when we're looking at cash flow and cash flow allocation, first priority is given to that. And then if there is a requirement uh, in the subsidiary business, the strategic subsidiary business, then we look at those uh, uh, on the basis of, uh, uh, you know, whether it's, it's, it's uh, uh, what the return, et cetera, is going to be. So uh, this, it's always a second priority to uh, CapEx. Okay, so thank you. So you can we can broadly expect that it will be around current level of debt only, right? Because you earlier answered that there's not major investments in group companies and your CapEx seems to be within, more or less within your cash flow numbers, assuming that, you know, things normalize a little at least. Yeah, so I think it's tough for us to say that to, uh, where we land up on EBITDA and whether it'll be able to cover the CapEx or not, it's tough to say today for the entire year. We know our CapEx, but EBITDA is unknown. So to that extent, uh, if the EBITDA takes care of it, then we should be okay. We should be lining up at the net uh, same levels of net debt to EBITDA. Uh, and I, 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 you know, as a sake of repetition, there is no uh, further investment uh, planned on the uh, group company side. Thank you, sir. We'll keep our fingers crossed for all of us. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Chadda from Inam Holding. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, so two questions. Uh, uh, first on the uh, fixed cost, uh, you have done an excellent job in uh, reducing and you gave in the opening comments also. Uh, but as you said, the uh, not all is uh, recurring in nature. So uh, uh, what number should we assume uh, could be recurring in nature considering difficult times and you would have reduced it because as you said, the repairs would come in the upcoming quarters. So that uh, uh, wouldn't be permanent in nature. So out of this 256, uh, how much portion can we assume uh, uh, on a quarterly run rate basis for this fiscal, which would be lower? No, sure. It's difficult to determine the most sustainable number. I think this uh, this quarter was tumultuous, and this quarter it was uh, you know uh, we've, we've taken measures, but uh, some of those uh, cost cutting measures, etc. Uh, you know we will know the amount, what benefits we will get when the operations normalize, whether some bit may come back and uh, some bit may sustain. So therefore, it's difficult to determine that number. But uh, what we are doing is we're looking at each and every cost item. Each business is doing so to figure out what is the uh, scope of uh, reduction in, in those all those items, which can be in the manpower. We are, uh, we are looking at manpower at all levels uh, to see where the reductions can be made. Uh, so uh, in manpower, especially, uh, there will be some permanent uh, uh, reductions. Uh, when I say permanent, it means that at least you'll see that in this year as well as in the next next year. In repair, some of it can reverse. In others category, which is advertising and admin, et cetera, we'll see some reduction. But generally we are looking at across all levels to see where permanent changes can be made. And uh, uh, regarding the uh, CAPEX uh, slide, basically the completion uh, timeline. So this uh, VSF thing, which was earlier to get over uh, before the end of this fiscal. So what what would be your completion or what I can say a commencement date of this incremental capacity of uh, VSF? Because as you said, uh, obviously uh, you're completing the CAPEX this year only, but uh, uh, these are two lines of uh, 300 tons. So are you phasing it one by one line? H how does that start up? You want me to respond, Ashish? Ashish, I was not... I lost my connection for a bit. I, can yeah. you please uh, speak? Uh, this is uh, regarding the VSF expansion. So you are doing two lines of 300 tons per each, which was for the uh, original schedule was going to get completed in the second half of FY21. 
so uh, what's the revised date uh, of either completion or uh, starting this uh, line yeah sure so like uh, dilip had said middle of august uh, next year is when we expect to uh, at least to one of the lines to start uh, and and second line will be uh, possibly a quarter uh, after that uh, dilip uh, yeah uh, yeah because you see what happened we had we had stopped work on this line during the last four months and now the monsoon time is there so once once we the uh, first line finishing and one quarter later is second line so you are saying august 20 and uh, december 20 right that's right 21 oh, 21. 21 august 21 and december 21 okay maybe, and yeah. uh, maybe late october okay. yeah that's maybe. right yeah yeah, yeah. october yeah, or something so october. basically yeah. next year quarter 2 and uh, quarter 3 so full impact yeah. could come uh, maybe that's more right. in quarter 4 okay and uh, if i add the capacity uh, to this so 566 and 219000 gets added so where is that uh, your presentation said says 801 so where is that 16000 additional coming from so uh, some de bottlenecking must be there sorry is which is the kharach line uh, kharach is included in 566 yeah, so, right Yeah, yeah, Kharach is uh, included. Everything is included. The only so, uh, capacity expansion. So I had a number of five sixty six to seven eighty eight. So I think your presentation yeah, shows eight zero one. Yeah. Yes. So there is a small de bottlenecking that we keep doing, which is uh, in Kharach as well as in uh, Haryana, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So those two will uh, take it to eight zero one. So okay, de bottlenecking. Yeah, that, that is yeah. that should happen this year or that also next year. That will be this year. See, de bottlenecking also requires approvals, etc. So it won't entail much of cap uh, capex, but uh, it just need you need to get approval for the enhanced capacity, and then you can run. Yeah, that should happen this year. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And uh, regarding the chemical thing, uh, if we can uh, guide on the similar uh, dates when the project would get uh, completed to one point four five. no so chemical like i said they're on hold we are not incurring anything other than the commitment committed payment that we have to make in, in that fund so we will uh, review these we will continuously review these project based on the performance of abita and then decide to, when to take up these projects oh so and uh so uh, chemical also uh, if i'm not mistaken it was uh, broken into two part first first that was 400 ton per day which was getting expanded which would have taken your capacity to close to 1293 and the second stage it would have been taken to uh, 1.45 million so both are on hold or yeah both are on hold there are there are totally you know uh, in caustic side there are two projects there is one in rehla and there is uh, balbadrapuram that we had acquired balbadrapuram was also in two phases so that's on the uh, chloralkali side then there was also certain wap projects that we were undertaking while you are at product there was also a power plant so they, they it it contains multiple projects uh, in in strategic capex right okay just a uh, continuation on this since uh, actually the chemical business uh, recovery looks to be faster uh, seeing the chlorine side of the business and even uh caustic soda is not big negative and uh, you have always been operating at uh, a full utilization level so uh, will you not be short on capacity if actually the demand return or is it uh, just to uh, 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 match cash flow with the capex you are postponing it on the chemical part or right. is it the approval yeah. process which has been taking time Yes, so um, uh, let me add here. I think we we have um, a structure in terms of um, looking at all our capex into three or four uh, levels. One is we focus on first EHS and sustainability and sustenance capex, and sure. second one is around as Ashish mentioned the commitments that we already made for these projects. Majority of these projects were to be completed this year. third we started to look at 
what is the demand situation in the market and which ones can be postponed for a while, um, where we manage the balance between their demand and supply. Fourth group is those which will make us competitive, um, whether it is a power plant, whether it is WAPS investment. We've taken all of them. Uh, I think we're going in phases. Uh, first quarter, uh, after the first quarter, VSF has taken some, uh, made some choice. In chemicals, what we intend to do is to also see the, the, the second quarter, how it pans out. And we want to uh, then activate uh, some uh, CAPEX activities if it makes sense. So this is actually a developing story. So every quarter we might actually come up with some development. In, in the case of chemicals, we want to take another one or two months to actually see uh, symptomatically because chemicals is, is a lot affected by international markets. So we are closely monitoring international markets. If you, if you know caustic prices are significantly lower across Asia uh, and uh, China is uh, quite strong and then uh, dominating uh, much of Asia. So we are closely monitoring that too. So we need to balance that. We'll come back to you. I think it's, it's exactly how you said we are closely monitoring, and then we don't want to be again caught. But as of now, we have enough capacity. Even if it goes up to 90, 95% of normalcy uh, by quarter four, we will have enough capacity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kumar from Antic Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, uh, so uh, in BSF segment, uh, so uh, so like, uh, have we attempted uh, taking price hike uh, in domestic market? Uh, like uh, we mentioned, some of the domestic, international uh, Chinese players are attempting in their market. Uh, so is there any price hike which is taken by us in domestic market? See, the, the, the prices uh, follow the international prices. So it, if it happens there, it will happen here also automatically. There is, so right now, the, they are trying it. It has not happened. There, there are no deals happening. There is an announcement. So let, let's see how it goes. So there has not been any price hike by us till now. They, mm -hmm. uh, no, this, this, because what happened right now, we are coming out of a, uh, of a, uh, of a shutdown. So, so right now, we are sustaining the same prices what happened pre-shutdown. Let the, let the normalcy come and then we'll see where the demand supply balance establish and what the international price is because the international price reflects in the domestic price straight away. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, regarding this uh, uh, additional duties on imports of yarn or VSF uh, has been there in your flow. Has there been any update on that one from government side? It is, no, it is still work in progress. We have no, no date right now. Is, there is an investigation going on right now. Uh, investigation related to the but, Chinese but, dumping players. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's anti-dumping investigation. Uh, yeah. On the yarn side, yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, pricing in the caustic segment, uh, so we don't see that recovering in the next six months, so there are any signs it's there also. I mean, pick up. The caustic recovery segment, clearly you see there is an overcapacity at this point of time in the country. Jayant, your voice is a little bit faint. Okay, so let me just try again. Is it better now? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So, in the caustic recovery, you know, on prices, clearly there is a demand uh, supply which is uh, impacting at the moment, plus the imports because of Southeast Asia, as Kalyan put it, there is a fair amount of capacity there. So as the demand picks up, like clearly we are seeing textile demand coming up, which is a large consumption center for costing. I think over the next couple of quarters, if the demand supply starts coming up, then maybe we could see some changes, but it's too early to say anything on the price front. Sure. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in terms of the debt, uh, which we have reported uh, uh, in the presentation, so there is an increase in gross debt as well as uh, cash position. Any specific reason for that? Uh, yeah, sure. I think uh, I can take that question. See, in case of uh, when we started the uh, quarter, there were a lot of uncertainties and we had gone to uh, lockdown. 
so uh, we wanted to maintain strong liquidity so we had uh, uh, borrowed money both from the capital market as well as from the uh, bank market just to maintain liquidity uh, you know but but the if you look at it more positively so that's why there's an elevated debt as well as elevated treasury but if you look at it uh, more positively uh, you know there is no negative arbitrage out here in fact the uh, uh, treasury has done extremely well because of the yield compression uh, the, the capital gains on the bond side has been uh, very good in this quarter uh, and the cost of debt also for us is very competitive because we get the best rates uh, both in the capital market as well as in the back market uh, but over the next uh, uh, you know this quarter and subsequent quarter uh, whenever there are debt rollovers coming we may use we not too sure yet we will keep continuing the situation but we may use combination of treasury as well as uh, new debt to repay the old debt i think this last question ha huh? so while we mentioned about de bottlenecking in terms for increasing capacity what are uh, this could- uh the financial start in the last stage last couple of phase it already is showing uh, higher capacity like 578 ktpa from 566 ktpa for vsf segment and likewise for vfy also uh, so this debottling is already partly done uh, yeah no, so the the you know we will reconcile the capacity numbers uh, with you offline but yeah you know some of these people bottlenecking would have got done and some must be pending like like kharach was done vilayat was done hariyar has been done they some of these are these are ongoing process i mean keeps on happening see that the word bottleneck means when you remove one the other one comes so we we keep on improving it uh, so this is a perpetual exercise oh, sure i'll get back to you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Amit Murarka from Motula Loswal. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, so my question is around margins. Uh, so the clean uh, has turned positive in the in one, but is it sustaining? Is what I was uh, trying to understand. So currently, Amit, it is clearly sustaining because of the entire focus on the health and hygiene aspect, uh, and clearly the segments of water. for our wraps which take both chlorine and the value added product is doing very well okay and also uh, in the price uh, chart that you showed on vsf and uh, the pulp price so like uh, doesn't look like uh, there is an uptick in either so even the volumes are recovering is it fair to say that the margins uh, will will be quite subdued at least in in, in the near term so difficult to give any uh, guidance uh, out here i think uh, the lip has uh, shared some bit of a uh, price trend and uh, we you know bottoming of the vsf price and how the cotton premium over uh, vsf has uh, increased and therefore there might be some uh, uh, recovery in the price of uh, vsf so uh, there is possibility of some recovery in uh, that pulp uh, you know uh, we are continuing to get the lag benefit to uh, you know of of uh, pulp purchase uh, and pulp price is continuing to be under pressure so we may get benefit to continue to get the benefit of that so it's difficult to give that whether the uh, margin that you're talking about will continue grow or decline uh, certainly not decline uh, it is more likely to uh, grow sure and uh, in one of the earlier calls uh, you had mentioned that uh, imports had started coming in uh, from china because of the over supply over there so uh, what is the situation on that front import uh, of uh, vsf you are talking about yes, or yes, you are talking yes. about Okay, so the import of yarn was coming in, I think. Yeah. The the import of Chinese yarn was coming in. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yarn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, and then then it stopped because China itself had a COVID. 
then then india got into a lockdown but i believe now again the pressure on the import of yarn is happening again from this month onwards so after the 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 tensions on the border has eased out there is a threat of import from china is happening so it may start so but that we'll have to face as it comes okay sure Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Lakhani from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Actually, most of my questions have been answered. Just uh, one on capital allocation. Uh, uh, I just want to understand what is the hurdle rate that uh, uh, you have internally when you decide for the projects, uh, both for VSF and uh, chemicals. And uh, do you think uh, uh, the the IRR that you have calculated earlier? Have now reduced uh, due to this uh, consistently uh, low demand and pricing environment. Sure. So, see, uh, we uh, whenever we approve a project, we always do a full thorough exercise of looking at our and whether uh, it meets our hurdle rate or not. And hurdle rate is, uh, you know, something that we calculate based at that time based on the industry. uh you know classic uh, uh, wac model right and we look at the beta in the textile industry etc and then arrive at uh, the hurdle rate and then you compare your irr with the uh, hurdle rate uh, that you have uh, got it and at that time when we did for example vilayat project it was uh, uh, much ahead of the uh, hurdle rate uh, uh, and 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 we look at the payback etc as well so uh, you know today it's difficult to say whether in you know you, you lay it in the in the current scenario obviously if you lay the numbers in the same model of vsf price uh, then the irr may not be uh, you know as attractive as it was at that time but generally when there is a uh, when these are commodity uh, uh, these uh, which is uh, you know volatile and 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 uh, open to risks there there in the model itself we take through the cycle realization etc so some bit of thing would have already been factored in some compression in the price would have already been factored into the model at that time uh you know today while while the vsf prices have come down but uh, pulp prices that may have been assumed in the model has also come down so difficult to say the irr levels of the project uh, today but at the time of approval we 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 had very good uh, uh, you know gap uh, between the irr and, and the vac yeah uh, is it possible to quantify some of those uh, 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 ranges of uh, hurdle rate and uh, uh, irr and also since you are prioritizing uh, the vsf uh, capex uh, ahead of uh, the chemical uh, is it fair to assume that the irr for the vsf project is uh, much better than the uh, caustic soda uh, uh, and that has been one of the factor for you prioritizing the vsf capex no so it's difficult to answer that question frankly i think uh, we are there is a lot of factors that goes into deciding whether you do the capex or not IRR is of course one of them. There is also market outlook. Uh, see, in caustic, as you have seen, that there is a increased uh, supply from the domestic players, which has impacted the eco, etc. And if you increase further supply in the market, it just not disrupts the uh, uh, you know uh, your your business, but it also disrupts the entire market, which means that it may disrupt your current capacity as well. So. many such factors go into prioritizing one project uh, over the uh, other vsf we have leadership position uh, and uh, uh, we see the demand pick up uh, that will come up uh, once the market stabilizes and the lockdown is uh, or covid situation is over so uh, th- that was one of the few reasons on the basis of which uh, we decided to go ahead uh understand and uh, uh, my question on quantification of the irr and hurdle rate if you can give us some numbers that would be great no so you know I, I, 
like I said, you know, I, I, I think uh, today the risk free, et cetera. So if you compare the hurdle rate of today versus the hurdle rate of when we approved the project, okay, uh, those are two different rates uh, uh, because the risk free has come down. The equity risk premium may have gone up slightly, but not uh, a lot. So, you know, uh, if any, a, any other way, how any analyst calculates the VAT is how we will look at it. Uh, and we look at more normalized VAC without the benefit of other builder group so or Grassin uh, cost of debt. So we take a normal cost of debt. So we would take a cost of debt at about 9% or so. We would take the risk-free return, what is prevailing in the market. The beta could be, uh, you know, whatever, 1 to 1.2 uh, range. And the risk-free premium, uh, sorry, the market risk premium could be somewhere in the range of uh, 5 to 6%. Uh, and that's how we would arrive at the cost of equity could come to somewhere around uh, 12%, 13% roughly. And cost of debt, like I said, would be nine. And then you take about uh, uh, typical funding structure of either 50-50 weights of debt and equity uh, or 40-60 sometimes we take, which is 40% uh, debt and 60% equity. Uh, the reason for that is that, you know, upfront the debt might be, higher in a typical project, but over a period of time, it normalizes. Understood. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumangal Nivatya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is with respect to operating margins of both the business. And, uh, you, uh, I mean, uh, 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 you answered in bits and parts uh, in the previous question, but just to summarize it together, now if, if we look at uh, historically, we used to maintain good comfortable 20 odd percent EBITDA margin, or operating margin in both the business. And in the second half of last financial year, it reduced to around record lows of 10%. Now, even if we exclude the, the first half of this year uh, as a one-off, uh, how do we see returning first to uh, the last, uh, the second half of last year levels of around 10% in both the businesses? And then how, I mean, when do we see uh, both the businesses returning to the historical mid-cycle range of 20 odd percent EBITDA or operating margin levels in how many quarters? Difficult to say uh, when we will reach those because, see, I think uh, if you do it mathematically, okay, the realization plays a big factor in the margin, right? And it uh, kind of uh, uh, flows through as well. So any, you know, the improvement in realization has a big bearing on improvement in uh, margin, uh, so difficult to say uh, when will we go back to those levels. It's, uh, uh, but but yeah, we hope that uh, through the cycle, like you said, uh, to we we revert back to the margins that we were enjoying in uh, uh, the first half of previous year. Uh, but Ashish, is there any uh, even any visibility on the? I mean, uh, 10 odd percent EBITDA margin, which you used to maintain in the second half of last year. Uh, any any confidence that we will be returning back in the second half this year to those levels so, or too tough to yeah. say? No, no, I, I, I don't think we should say that it's too tough. I think there are few levers that we need to keep in mind, right, which is under our control. Certain things are not under our control and certain things are under our control. What is under our control is the conscious... Uh, uh, initiatives that we can take to reduce the costs that are under our control. So a raw material cost, which we are buying from the market, you know, you, you cannot, you, you may not have too much control over those. You can change the sourcing, et cetera, but you can't do much about it. You can change consumption norm, which can help you. So you can reduce costs. Uh, fixed costs is another uh, uh, number that you can focus on. So that's one side of the story. The second side of the story is uh, how you improve your realization. So if you talk about just gray, I think gray, there is little leverage that you have in increasing uh, realization given a certain market. But what you can always work on is a product mix. So you can look at uh, specialty, you can look at uh, value added products, et cetera, which are less 
uh, volatile and uh, uh, you know and and they give you a little bit more resilience in the price which we have seen in this difficult quarter as well where both specialty side of both bsf as well as uh, uh, chlorine uh, derivatives have actually given us uh, a, a good uh, realization uh dilip kalyan please feel free to uh, jump in if you want to yeah. add anything at this point yeah. yeah so from chemicals point of view i think maybe there were a couple of questions before also i think what i can say is um uh, we have a portfolio of uh, caustic which is extreme uh, a commodity which has uh, a cyclical aspect to it and then we have chlorine which is now more and more looking like um, not typically like india but rest of the world and then we have chlorine derivatives and then we have epoxy resins so if you see our over chemical uh, part uh, in over last 10 years um the across 10 years we had the highs of 20 plus uh, we came somewhere in between the decade to 15 went back to 20 25 plus uh, ebitda percentage and uh, we do expect this year and next year will not be 20 plus back um but we will we will still be strong enough but what has happened in the last 3 4 years when uh, it was going to 20 plus 25 plus uh, ebitda there are more players in the market the smaller players in the market and there is more uh, availability there are more investment uh, announcements etc i think we would in a typical commodity cycle see announcements when markets are good and uh, Uh, reserve not pushing ahead uh, when the markets are not good uh, from where we have uh, looked at over the next 5 to 10 year strategy that we have just uh, completed we actually used the covid time to actually review that and uh, we are very clear we will have one or two disruptions like this over the next 10 years of strategy we will have the highs and lows and we we believe the next 3 4 years uh, we will need to continue our investment momentum exactly same as before and um, we we do think we will we would like to maintain the the leadership position only thing we would like uh, to handle is pacing it so that we will catch at least the the, the few months of growth in demand but structurally these investments are over 30 40 years so if we can catch Uh, exactly that moment of demand going up it will be great um and that's what we try and then pace otherwise structurally we are very clear um the the returns are there the cagr that we expect are there the demand and the application uh, expectations are very clear to us too so we're quite confident i think it's about you know being prudent about when do you uh, start these plans how do you make sure your volumes come out and then ensure you catch when the the demand is going up rather than when it is down i think that's the pacing uh, activity we are doing i think even choices that we are making internally i think it's very clear we have a uh, strategic approach to where we want to be in each of these products um and you can't compare apples uh, to pears these are different businesses each place we want to have a leadership position and we are taking a a uh, very pragmatic view on who should be doing when uh, for catching the right kind of demand momentum yeah dilip yeah uh, all i would like to add from vss side is see our uh, if you talk of second half of last year and, and what we are where we are today the prices haven't changed much so i think that part is as i was telling you earlier that the, the, it is rightly uh, bottoming out what you are talking about is the demand and if if by q4 we do get back to the demand what was earlier there then you are there second what we are missing out is the business has built up huge resilience in this two quarters the last quarter and now the the cost benefit which you have built in now will will come in and add on to what was historically there we never saved the kind of fixed cost we have saved in this quarter so even if we stay carry forward 50 60% of this to next quarter you are you are for the same volume and same pricing your your margins could be better so that that's how we make the businesses more resistant to cyclical fluctuations and that's what we are doing from our side of it rest all the market will decide 
but we believe that we are the business is getting more and more uh, resilient as we go along through through product mix and through cost understand understand yes sir uh, so with uh, respect to the chemical business uh, uh, if you can share some intelligence as to where are we in terms of cost curve versus other players and since we are making low single digit margin can we assume the other smaller players must be bleeding and uh, similar to our expansion plan the overall industry will have a pause on the expansion and maybe naturally the demand supply dynamics will improve over maybe next one two years is that a fair assumption i think that's a that's a fair assumption that you have on the cost curve we are in the top quartile of the cost curve uh in you know our scale is substantially different from the scale of in terms of uh, further announcements coming as kalyan alluded to i think you have already seen a pause uh, there are quite a few projects which were announced but which are not taking off but i think it's too early to take that call i think it's we just coming out of you know q1 of the first quarter which it was impacted i think as another one or two quarter goes through the real situation will actually pan out then and if the industry is back to its earlier levels you might see again the announcements coming back because uh, then there is that demand which is there to be ca- caught up with understand and if i can just squeeze in one last question uh, to dilip sir uh, so with respect to vsf could you share what the capacity utilization how the sequential movement is happening in china and the inventory level and i'm sorry if i uh, missed this information earlier so they told you that china uh, capacity utilization is about 64% which is about 15 to 20 percent lower than what the historical was. That's a good sign, and we have stayed there for quite some time now. So a lot of the so-called low-cost and less efficient players have either shaken out or have shut their operations. The inventory had gone to as high as 60, 44 days, is now at still high, it's about 34, 35 days, but coming down. So I think uh, you never can predict what is happening in China, but I think. Uh, i believe a, a a new normal is emerging in vsf and now the demand side will decide what happens if if this or continues and if this inventory level is there and now the the textile demand picks up then you will see uh, the uptick so now i think we have to watch how the china us relationship pan out what happens to the demand for chinese textiles uh, whether uh, uh, the footfalls in the china textile which is improving i think the july and august is august is better than what was july so i think let let's hope so so we have we all are watching the demand part of it now in china if if the, if the chinese demand picks up uh, things should look up got it uh, thanks for all the answers and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of nitin shakthar from green capital single family office please go ahead Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question pertains to uh, the capex for viscose stable fiber. Uh, I think there is a fair amount of capex which you've outlined for the next nine months, but uh, the capex for quarter one has been very low. How do you anticipate to do uh, approximately 300 crores of capex over the next three quarters on an average case basis? If you could just highlight a bit of the capex strategy for the viscose project. Yes. See, viscose wise, what happened? We were all ready. If if COVID had not struck us, by now my first line would have got commission. So everything is there. The equipments are there. Building has been made. Civil foundation has been done. We just have to put people to erect them. We are in that final phase of the project where things go much faster than what has taken you so far. Now, because we paused the project because of the COVID crisis, I think we now have to regroup. And once the regrouping is done, I think uh, August uh, 21 is a is a very very doable target. Should not be a problem at all. But there is nothing we are waiting outside. The equipment has been done. The all the civil work has been over. Structures have been raised. Now issue is installation. And that also the bulk of the equipment have been installed on one line. So now it's only the the offsites and utilities and those kinds of things. And getting back the labor. Which we had, there was a time when eight thousand guys were working on my site, so we had to get those people back. So I think uh, it, 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 it's not a problem because it is not an issue of spending now; it's the issue of erecting and, and commissioning. 
Okay, uh, and uh, my second question pertains to the sales volume mix. Do you anticipate the export sales to go higher or lower? Uh, conversely, do you anticipate the domestic sales to go higher or lower over the next few quarters? Our, uh, our uh, guess is, our, our, as I told you, the export is not our priority volume. So I think as, as the quarters improve, as the demand in India improves, the export will come down and domestic volumes will go up. But and in the quarter one, your export yeah, sales were exports. Like, pardon? Uh, in quarter one, your export sales for some reason was uh, higher, or you increased yeah. the percentage of yeah. export sales. Yeah, yeah, because there was no demand in the domestic market. But see, we are matching capacity with demand. So I have an X capacity which is fixed. If the Indian demand is matching the capacity, the X is equal to the local sales. Because the Indian demand went down because of lockdown and COVID, the global Demand was still there, but there was no lockdown in Turkey. There was there, there, were, there was no lockdown in, uh, in in Indonesia. There was no lockdown in when Pakistan didn't have a lockdown. So, uh, so we so to 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 take it to take, make sure that my capacity gets utilized, we started exporting. So it was a more a tactical export than my long term strategy. My long term strategy is to serve the Indian requirement. This Grafim has been set up to serve India's demand, and that's my first priority. And if the India demand is not there, then only I think of exporting it. So right now we are doing more export because the Indian demand, as, as we shared with you, the textile markets are still opening up. It was only 30, 35-36% end of the quarter one. As we speak, it's about 60%. So once, in, once India demand comes to 90-95% of the old level, we'll go back to the historical export level. Historically, we used to export about 14 to 15 to 20% from graphing and 80% was domestic. So we, we may go back to that, that ratio. Okay, so thank you. That's all from my end. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is time constraint. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukia for closing comments. No, so thanks. Thanks a lot. There were many uh, questions. Uh, so thanks for uh, asking those questions. I think it has been a difficult uh, quarter, uh, I th but but I, we do uh, all together, the entire management feel that uh, we've come out stronger from this quarter. We do hope that uh, some of the cost measures, et cetera, that we are taking will give, uh, will, will make the company overall uh, resilient and better sh shaped to uh, grab the opportunity that comes uh, both on the volume as well as the realization side uh, uh, in, in, in later quarters. So thanks and uh, wish you all, uh, uh, you know, all the safety, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Good day. Stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. On behalf of Grassum Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.